Open shot 243 brings stability improvements. That kind of hung my X session and Zombie Mir has returned from the dead with a 1.0 point release and it hungers for kiosk. GitHub's annual ho Hacktoberfest is back and celebrating its fifth year and you don't have to submit code to join in on the fun. There is a new PeerTube mobile client for Android. Will the P2 Play app help PeerTube gain traction? Own Cloud is still kicking. It even has a bit of an update. And Solus gives you a new ISO. It has all the nines. <laughs> You're supposed to say it in some degree different. You, you were closing. Come on. Oh, okay. Uh, stick around, ladies and gentlemen. There's a whole lot of Linux news coming up. Because it's, it, it's another great day. Because <laughs> it's Wednesday. Gotcha. It's, it's a great day for Linux. <laughs> it's another great day for Linux, everyone. <laughs> so let's go. Let's go. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we take that midweek break, sit back, relax, and talk about some of the fun things going on in Linux, open source, floss, penguins, you name it sometimes. Um, I'm Vin Stone. That's Joel Bryant. And all the way to the right on the island, that's one Pedro Mateus joining us live, everyone in Chat Realm Dynamic. What's going on, beautiful people? <laughs> well, uh, over here, I learned the hard way that NVIDIA still hasn't pulled a summer when it comes to their drivers because uh for anyone watching <laughs> uh <laughs> if you uh stuck around for yesterday's attempt at a stream yeah no that 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 relies solely that was uh completely the fault of the nvidia beta drivers so uh yeah sorry about that <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, poor Pedro. <laughs> and last Saturday, I, I went to WordCamp LA, the local WordPress convention, and learned about the new WordPress editor, Gutenberg, and even got to chat about Linux with one of the speakers, who is also an LGC supporter. Hello, Joseph. He was really <laughs> Joseph Dixon, really nice guy. <laughs> right on, right on. Um... I thought I was going to have like a bunch of crazy stuff to play with. Turns out it didn't because Linux is too easy. I want to switch over to BSD. I, I thought I was going to be spending an afternoon playing with interfaces and Firewire. No, turns out not the case. It just worked out of the box. So what do we mm -hmm. need to start off with this week? Not Oktoberfest, but it is the season for Oktoberfest, Joe. Yes, Oktoberfest 2018. This is GitHub's annual Hacktoberfest is back and celebrating its fifth year. And it's a great way of encouraging people to contribute to open source projects. And all you have to do is submit five pull requests to open source projects between October 1st and the 31st. And the first 50,000 people to complete the challenge will earn a limited edition Hacktoberfest shirt. So it's all all cool and good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, they say in the, uh, the announcement that last year, 30,000 plus people from over 100 countries, 119 to be exact, could have just said that, uh, submitted almost 240,000 pull requests to all kinds of projects. Yes, last year you weren't uh, owned by Microsoft. I am kind of curious to see what the numbers will be this year. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely. So uh, what, one thing I loved about this article is they had a, a link to a really excellent guide on how to contribute to open source for first timers and veterans alike. And, of course, there are many ways to contribute to open source, not just writing code, but helping organize a project, planning events and conventions, creating artwork, and writing documentation. So for all those out there who don't code, um, you still can contribute in so many ways to open source. And, uh, yeah, it's it, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Uh, own cloud. It's a thing. It's got a client. Indeed. Uh, and own cloud, you may remember it from a long time ago, where it was uh, basically the one bit of uh, software that would let you do, um, well, let you set up your own uh, uh, cloud file syncing client, uh, all completely open source. But then something happened and some of the people behind it moved on to uh, next cloud. I honestly can't remember all the details of what happened, but it wasn't pretty. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, next cloud seemed to be the one that uh, 
got all the momentum and got all of the quote unquote talent behind it. Uh, but as it turns out, OwnCloud is still very much around and they've put out the uh, new 2.5.0 release and they have a virtual file system, which is still in the tech preview. And what it does is it lets you pick which files to synchronize down to whichever um, client machine you're using and which ones to keep online. That is a very good thing to have, especially now in the age of SSDs, where storage, even though mm -hmm. not as much right now, but storage still comes at a premium if you're living in SSD land. So that's a very good thing to have. And sync performance was improved by reducing unnecessary unnecessary file scanning. Uh, this is great for for as if, uh, for example, if you have a cha change a small file in a directory with lots of files, it will upload much faster. So mm. that's a really, really nice feature. And um, the own cloud client also does checksumming with the server, which is really, really awesome. So that when you upload and download a file back and forth, it checks if the file was corrupted during the sync and thus preventing lost files. So and these preventing are, uh, yeah. malware from mal making mal it to your server. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Definitely. That's really a interesting thing. I did look, they do have enterprise stuff mm -hmm. yeah. available. Yeah. I, I took a peek at that. Yeah, that is priced at enterprise stuff too. So mm -hmm. might want to bounce mm -hmm. away from that. Have either of you ever used OwnClub? Nope. Nope. Well, I, <laughs> I really like the idea behind it, but I've never used yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> never used it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Something to take a look at. Uh, Clip OS is a French operating system, and it's seeing its first mm -hmm. alpha release of the Clip OS project. Uh, this is basically what the um, government spooks run mm -hmm. in Space France, isn't it? Yep, uh, that yeah. is, uh, that's what they were doing. Uh, their previous versions, they were all very, uh, very well kept secret uh, because it was, you know, they had to worry about uh, security and they had to worry about uh, people possibly stealing government secrets. So they kept it under wraps. But with version five, they're making it wildly available. So that's good. That's very, very good, uh, especially since it's relying on uh, open source technologies for not just the base OS, but all the software that it runs. So, yeah, it's good to see. That's kind of neat, man. I mean, UFEI, uh, Secure Butte, uh, system-wide enforced file system integrity protections, enforced distinction between applications, binary system data. Uh, Jill, what are your thoughts on this? Oh, yeah. Well, I thought it was cool that this is based on Gen 2 Hardened which is a Gen 2 project that offers multiple additional security services on top of Gen 2 Linux. And uh, Katana Steel in chat says uh, he's really enjoyed Gen 2 Hardened and said it was a really fun and, and sleek interface. And uh, this actually, Gen 2 Linux makes sense because it is very fast, modular, configurable, and runs well on embedded systems. Yeah, and, and if Google decided mm -hmm. to use Gen 2 to create Chrome OS, it's Probably not all that bad. <laughs> so would anybody actually yeah. run this at home? Or is I this know. kind of a curiosity? Mm, like, no. Well, maybe maybe good for research a, purposes. Well, on a laptop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a laptop you don't use very often. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it does take a while to install Gen 2. So. <laughs> but, I think in all fairness, but, everyone's had that Gen 2 experience. It's like, well, yes. I, I've done that. Where's my merit badge? Okay, well, let's put something else on here. Um, <laughs> Back from the dead, mere one point, not point, not. This is uh, from the Ubuntu blog. We're pleased to announce the release of Mir. The main things and that note with this release are support for Wayland, XDG cell, extensions and improved facilities for customizing display layouts. You're like, hmm, mm -hmm. what's this going on? Because I was reading through this and I was like, wait a minute. So just coming from the straight on, I was like, has Mir just been reduced to uh, something to be used for digital signage? Question mark. Yeah, they. I think yeah. they've <laughs> mostly completely dropped the the whole idea. No, it's a new graphical server. It's a competitor to Wayland because that worked so well. Oh wait, the project died in the meantime. Yeah, that did 
did not work well at all. But uh, what they should have done from the start is actually what they're doing now. It's to use Mir as a compositor slash window manager for Wayland. Uh, that's mm. very broad strokes there. It, it does much more than that. But uh, for the sake of the less knowledgeable people uh, listening to this, <laughs> uh, that's basically what it does. It does compositing, does window managing, does a couple of other things. It uh, really works really well for embedded devices because it's a very light um, set of libraries. It's not even like a full-on graphical well, server Well, that really anymore. makes sense, though, because that was yeah. the big push behind it. It's like, this is for, you know, the Ubuntu phone. Yes. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. This this was part of their Unity 8 and the future of the convergence of the Ubuntu mobile and desktop. So it does make sense that it's being used for the Internet of Devices. Yeah. And, it's, and if only they had done this from the start. Yes. <laughs> yeah, very, very true. Very true. <laughs> made that distinction. Hey, no, and, I mean, it was a yeah. good thing. But mm -hmm. you know, I, we were talking, uh, somebody in Discord, this was like last week, they said, Oh, Wayland's out anytime. I looked it up and I was like, Wayland's been out for a decade now. Mm hmm. And it's been out for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was kind of hoping that Mir, when it was being pushed as like it's its own thing, mm -hmm. would help, you know, competition with that. And now we're just kind of back to Wayland and NVIDIA going, no, we're not going to support. <laughs> <laughs> we do things our own way. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, uh, We'll see. I'm I'm glad it's still around, and I'm sure it will find good uses. Uh, YouTube Music. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, specifically, a bit of a client if you'd like to listen to YouTube Music. Eh, don't really care about the videos, and uh, well, this is a, a website that you can feed it. Uh, search terms and it will uh, give you the option to add specific videos to a playlist and then you can save uh, that playlist to access it later. Uh, they also have a profile so you can log into your uh, YouTubes and uh, get the playlist that you already have. Honestly, like the idea behind cloud syncing your um, li uh, your mm -hmm. playlists and being able to reliably play music from the tubes is good but YouTube itself already does that for me and i don't think i've ever felt the need for a dedicated music player that uh, uses youtube as a back end then again uh, i guess the only <laughs> need i have for a uh, media player on this particular desktop pc is to sort through the mp3 mm -hmm. files that i need to push to my phone <laughs> Yeah, so, not well, the target audience here. <laughs> yeah, I am actually the target audience because I like having a separate music player. And I used to use YouTube to play music all the time and I've actually started using this uh, application Ray instead um, mm -hmm. since, uh, since the past weekend. And I love the user interface and it is organized like a good music player should be. And it's really, really nice to be able to create proper music playlists which you can rewind and fast forward and 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 also sync to Google Drive is wonderful mm -hmm. being able to save all your playlists and I know of course on YouTube you could save your playlist but you don't have as much control over the playlists and I like the fact that uh, you can play YouTube videos in the app without commercials and that's always nice so it makes for a smooth listening uh, of music experience as well as playing YouTube videos. <laughs> so right. that was really cool. <laughs> well, especially... And of course... Well, what? what? Uh, it's just that it is a website, so you could just download the Electron app. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And there is an Electron... Yes. <laughs> of course. <Yeah. laughs> you mean you can install the portable website? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> That's definitely a thing. Uh, this is neat. I don't play anything on the desktop because, you know, it's like, meanwhile, in the Vin Gave, it's like, okay, Google, play me a song. But even with that is, you know, with YouTube Red, because I can minimize, just mm -hmm. have YouTube running in the background. But do Jill, you listen to yeah. music on YouTube? Uh, yes, I do. Actually, quite quite a lot. It's really nice so I don't have to go through my vinyl records and my cassette tapes and get out some of my favorite tracks. All right. <laughs> so. do, you, do you kind of make it a point to wear like bad headsets so you don't get angry at the 
J yeah, equality. Yeah, that, that always is a thing. Yeah, that always is an issue. Yeah, I usually go back and, and you know, I, I have all my favorite tracks uh, backed up myself. So, well, that was but, one of the things I, yeah. like, what was it, yesterday or the day before yesterday? I was working on something. It's like, I need background noise. And I just had a tablet with me. I wasn't upstairs. And I was like, oh, I'll put on some typo negative. Went to like the official typo negative, whoever owns the rights to that page. And it's like, oh, the videos. Some of them were in 240p. No. <laughs> like, oh, that's rough. Anyway, go check that out if it's your thing. Uh, th is that what the kids do to listen to the music these days on the YouTubes? Or wouldn't they yeah. just, do you use Spotify? Is that a lot easier? Yeah, Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> All or, social networking. I, I guess maybe it's a thing is like this is competing with free. Well, Spotify would be competing with yes. free if you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, YouTube to PeerTube. Yeah. So this is a new Android application called Peer, P2 Play uh, for PeerTube, the federated video streaming platform which uses WebTorrent. We have been talking about since April. Mm -hmm. And I downloaded and installed the, uh, the P2 Play APK on Android and searched Linux Gamecast at PeerTube.Mastodon.Host and it played our LGC and LWW VODs. It worked very, very well. And it is a work in progress, and it doesn't have a search feature right now, but it will in the future. But it's it's looking really what really good, and it play it it worked. It made with the working. <laughs> All right. So I didn't get a chance to try it out, but uh, this is what it needs, hundred percent, because we upload our stuff to PeerTube, yeah. and I think four, or if we have like a super ratings week, eight people. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. we <laughs> we, I had one with 14, so oh, that was okay. good. <laughs> there we go. That's what I'm talking about. And but th then you feel like, oh man, nobody's watching. Then you just look at everything and like listen, then they all have zero views. It's like, oh, we are crushing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, the, the thing with PeerTube right now is uh, it's not just a P to play, it's the whole of PeerTube, because it's decentralized and it has a bunch of uh, nodes that you can hit that have different videos on them, mm -hmm. uh, that's the big uh, issue. Uh, if there yeah. was a centralized um, search engine or an app with the said centralized search engine built into it that could access all the nodes and find whichever video you're looking for, yes, that would help. What that you, would help yeah. a lot. What are you, the government? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the government's going to love the moment that happens because it's just going to immediately go after all the people. Well, I mean, but... I mean what, what is on PeerTube outside of like us and French music videos? <laughs> Blender um, videos. Blender videos. Good point. Adult <laughs> videos. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, whole movies. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it does need some type of like setup for that. And I love the idea of it. YouTube desperately needs competition. Yes. Oh, definitely. So anything that moves it in the right direction like this yeah. is good news. Yeah. yeah. And Mastodon's doing well. So let's hope that PeerTube, uh, you know, adoption improves as well. Mm. Right. Um, Pedro, tell me about how easy it is to install NVIDIA drivers. Uh, it's... Oh. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Easy enough, but I'll get to that in a second. This is about Solus specifically. That's a lot of S's. Uh, and it's Solus, <laughs> it's the Roundup ISO for Solus 3.9999. And uh, <laughs> you can download it. Basically, if you're already running Solus, you already have all of this. Uh, but uh, if you are installing fresh, now you get Firefox 62, LibreOffice 6.1, Rhythmbox 3.4.2, <laughs> and Thunderbird 60 directly out of the box, as well as the latest versions of Mate, Budgie, and Gnome, of course. Oh, man, so... they got rid of Spider Monkey. Uh -huh. <laughs> Monsters. Yeah, no, apparently Thunderbird is playing nice with the copyrights again, so it gets included into all the distros. Um, but yeah, uh, it's... Um, yesterday, uh, if you watched the, uh, the live stream, what I attempted to do, you probably noticed that the... Um, 
Well, it kept crashing. It crashed so bad whenever I tried to play a Proton game uh, that it took down the entire X session with it. And that's because in Solus, there are <laughs> two options when it comes to the NVIDIA drivers and the repos. You have the old uh, 390 long-lived branch, and you have the beta 410. And I was using 410 because I decided, you know what, let's try the beta, let's see what it can do. And it failed miserably. But that's NVIDIA's problem. Uh, Solus, I would like the option to install something in between, like the short-lived branch, which is currently sitting mm. at version 396. That would be really helpful there, um, <laughs> Joshua, uh, Pete, yeah. Ike, anyone Ike. who's currently <laughs> working on this, just please. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, well, what what is awesome is that this new version of Solus ships with Linux kernel 4.1. 18.5, which provides the latest support for AMD Intel and Intel CPUs, including uh, for high count uh, CPUs like the AMD Threadripper 2, which is really awesome. Mm -hmm. And it needed that, <laughs> definitely. Um, um, and they improved the Realtek wireless card and dongle support with enabling the, the, yeah, <laughs> the Realtek <laughs> modules. This was much me needed. I had two laptops that Solus, uh, my Wi-Fi wouldn't work on Solus because of this reason. So <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's getting a mention because <laughs> it was an issue. <laughs> it's good to know. And as Pedro pointed out, if you have Solus, you already have this. This is yeah. just yeah. something to keep in mind if you're walking into that. But yes, I'm definitely from the day and age of... Do you honestly ever, I mean, you know it's going to work, but do you have any real expectations of Wi-Fi working? And he's like, ah, no, but too many years of this just not working, having to use the binary blob. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah. you can still install the um, the NVIDIA drivers from the run file and they will work until you get a kernel update because uh. last time that anyone's tried, uh, the DKMS script that's built into the run file wouldn't work on Solus. So I don't know if that's changed in the meantime. Maybe it has. I actually have to give it a try tomorrow. And this is why everyone should run Arch, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, OpenShot 243 released animated mass nudge zoom fixes improved stability and more and that and more part all all so <laughs> improved oh. stability has it stopped uh. crashing now? Uh, hang on. Well, let's play this game. Um, Jill, you say the nice things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> OpenShot 2.4.3 adds support for creating animated masks, as Ben said, and transitions using um, images and videos. And this is a powerfully uh, creative feature for artists and is crucial um, crucial element for any editor to be taken seriously, like that of Caden Live. And um, as in the last re release, there were a lot of there are a lot of improvements to audio, um, as the creator Jonathan Thomas has promised. Waveform display rendering is much more precise and easier to edit, and it it fixed audio wave files not rendered after completion, which would cause the audio track to stutter when navigating it in the timeline. So they they actually did do a lot of improvements with the audio which i was really happy with because he you know again had made that promise that he would fix the audio <laughs> and ffmpeg 3 and 4 is now supported out of the box for faster rendering of video and audio codecs and that's always a good thing mm. So, <laughs> so Ben, I, so ben had some issues from your show notes. I uh, I assume that's not entirely the case. Um, no, listen, I take the Pepsi challenge. Okay. <laughs> this version of OpenShot, like all previous updates that we've covered on this show, it's like okay, yes. it's an app image. Why not try it? You know, it's a couple hundred mm -hmm. megs. Download it. Ch mod it. Good thing I will say is I can finally navigate past the tooltip screen, which up until this release, I could not get to go away. It would not go away. It was like, I'm just kind of stuck here. So I was kind of excited. Uh, I was a huge fan of OpenShot for a long, long time. Yeah. And before we moved our workflow over to KDN Live. And, you know, we're not doing ProRes type stuff. We're recording everything lossless. MPEG-4, so lossless, air quotes, and a wave. So I effectively threw our um, QA session on Saturday at Chair Acquisition into this. <laughs> and what we ended up with was a 1.9 gigabyte MKV and an accompanying 88.4 meg WAV file. Just to test out. Dropped them both in there. It's like, all right. It froze. 
<laughs> it froze. You, you, here's the here's the freeze I'm talking about. The freeze where you got enough time to open up H top. You're like, oh wow, okay. You know, it's like, are you doing anything? And it was, and continued doing it. So after about three minutes, now keep in mind, I am running on a relatively underpowered Ryzen 7 1700 with an NVMe drive. Yes. Uh, so it took about three minutes. Then the clips kind of popped in. I guess it was doing the proxy for him, but it gave no indication. It was like, I'm here. And that's that. They popped in. So I trimmed the clips, took out the razor tool, just kind of chopped. Cause I was like, let's see if I can make it to your acquisition. That's how I wanted to do it. And, uh, I did that. It took like maybe a minute to cut each one of those. And I was like, okay. Then I made the mistake of highlighting one and hitting the delete button to delete that <laughs> clip. That, that's when things got, uh, not so good, Brad, not so good. Oh. Um, yeah, I pressed that delete button. Now, I, at this point, at this point in our story, I was accustomed to the freezes. So hey, this is like, okay, let's wait. You know what? Let's go make some more tea. Came back. <laughs> X, input, everything <laughs> locked. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have any problems on, on my... I actually ran it on my OctaCore Dual Xeon uh, render workstation, and it ran just fine. <laughs> So, to so its credit, it didn't completely freeze yeah. X. I, I, I was able to drop in, well, it froze X. I was able to get to a TTY and uh, nuke it and bring it back up. But yeah, that uh, kill nine, that, that was my experience. And I, I'm not poo-pooing on it. And, and by the way, yeah. I, I am running a rather bizarre, uncommon uh, distro, 1804 LTS. <laughs> so yeah. Well, I kind of remember, Ben, you had problems with the last update, too, if I recall. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't get past that tooltip screen, John. Yeah. That one. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> kind of threw it a wouldn't wrench. start. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was running it on 1604 without issues. So. <laughs> well, it's good to know. Um, it's an app image, so go try it. And yeah. maybe you'll have better experience with it. Uh, I... I Katie and Live need something to go against in the, you know, like prosumer yeah. area before we get into the paid closed source stuff. So all the best yeah. of luck to that project. <laughs> and just for fun, uh, I threw this in the notes because yes. I remember way back when, when I, I wanted to like <laughs> screw off at work, but I didn't want to like publicize it to everyone you know you kind of do that stealth mode i'm like uh listen i'm procrastinating right now but i i don't need you to know that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that brings us to redditshell.com yeah this is uh having fun goofing off at work as ven stated <laughs> in the show notes this is reddit shell it's a web-based shell emulator for browsing reddit via command line and it's actually it works really, really well. Um, you can view previews of the picture of pictures in ter in the terminal is a nice feature and it, and it's really quick. And you have the option of launching a picture in a separate web browser tab as well with the view content command. And I think this is really cool, but I think I would prefer it on a local shell instead, like the Reddit terminal viewer, which is uh, um, a link in the show notes. Mm -hmm. So I've used the the Reddit ter terminal viewer many times, and I enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, the uh, Reddit terminal viewer is something that I may or may not have installed in uh, the uh, Windows subsystem for Linux for my work laptop. Uh, uh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> but yeah, no, putting it in a browser is, uh, that's basically just step one into justifying someone else into building an Electron app. It's like, look, it's a Reddit command line thing that's an Electron app and uses the exact same amount of RAM that it would to go to the actual website. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can have fun with it. Um, this was always my philosophy. You know, it was like what I thought about putting this in the notes. It's like, listen, man, if you're forced to use something like this at work, chances are <laughs> you're not in a position to be installing additional software at the computer, or you shouldn't be, Pedro. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I'm always touchy careful about that because it's, it's like if they're looking for a reason to get rid of you, there's one. Um <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, see, I know for a fact that one of the engineers at another uh, place in the country uh, happens to have 
a bunch of Steam games installed because uh, <laughs> his laptop is actively broadcasting every single bit of uh, every single bit of software that's installed on it to the service desk. Yeah. So we know exactly what's happening. <laughs> Just remember, yeah. Pedro will throw you under the bus first. <laughs> I don't know. That's neat. I mean, yeah, from the command line, this is just a fun little thing. I think they've made, yeah. there's probably versions of this that look like Microsoft Office or Word or, so, or Excel. That, uh -uh. That, that'd be more frightening. Um, yeah. So let's get into a slice pie. Before that, we want to uh, thank the lovely people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Make this show possible. <laughs> That's right. No ads. I know, right? But mm -hmm. uh, yeah. we like to rock and roll with it. Uh, easy way you can help on that. It's at patreon.com forward slash Linux. Gamecast, that name again. It's patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Pedro, who do we have to thank this week? We have uh, two names. Um, two Mr. names? Colsta, yes. Wait, Agent, uh, who, Agent Colsta? <laughs> Could be. <laughs> and uh, don't worry, Colsta, we got your message. We very much appreciate it. He's our new Patreon. And uh, Mr. M. Langston has also increased his pledge. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. So, yeah, you can be mm -hmm. awesome like Colsta and M. Langston by going to, as Ven said, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. But if a recurring donation is not your thing and you'd rather just give us some stuff, you can uh, check out the Amazon wishlist link and uh, the new egg link those are there or just get yourself some games with the humble affiliate link that mm -hmm. will uh that won't cost you anything extra and we get a little bit off the top and most of it goes to charity anyway so yeah hey. it does <laughs> um <laughs> hey man th that's just how i roll it's uh yeah. you get your name and credits plus if you like our content and you're like man i wish there was an extra hour of this every week there is uh yes. something we do <laughs> Because like hundred percent, we do consider our patrons our bosses, and mm. so this is our production meeting that kind of catches you up. I'm, I'm stretching the truth on production <laughs> because if you condense it down, there's a good like 15, 20 solid minutes of actually like what we have planned, what's going on, what's in the future. Then it's usually movie and TV shows mm -hmm. that we're reviewing <laughs> um, unintentionally, but that's yeah. put out on your own custom RSS feed. If you like that, but as I said, you get your name in the credits and early access to our uncut stuff, which does go free <laughs> access to our discord, but there's always IRC. You know, we don't like putting stuff behind a paywall. That's not really how we roll. I do need to think, uh, terribly uh, yes. mysterious, <laughs> mysterious stranger, stranger. Who we all know who it is. Uh, for a firewire card and cable from our wish zone, which one I, I, I put up there. I was like, you don't even want to know what this is for because it, this was shiny dangly keys for old man Vin. You know, like you keep a child amused with it. Like, Cause I ordered a new piece of kit, our 16 channel, uh, interface. And I was like, wait, this has got firewire on it. Hmm. I wonder. And well, it, it just kind of works. I was hoping maybe to make a video out of that. It's like, this is the struggles of how you do it. Yeah. Yeah. If I made a video about that, it would be three seconds long. It's like, boop, click. It's the intro, a screenshot, and the outro. Yeah. It makes what's working. Here's a very legitimate thing, though. I do need to make that video because that information on the internet doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> you think I'm joking? I'm not being facetious about that. Yeah. Because I yeah. searched. It doesn't. I yeah. wore my Google food out. Because like, do I have any chance of doing this? Like shrug. I don't know. But I really wanted, uh, as Jill would call it, that vintage firewire sound. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. Uh, but it does work. It's kind of brilliant. Thanks everyone for making this possible. This is a fun, fun thing. And I think uh, we got some other stuff going on. Like on Tuesdays, you can watch Pedro crash to desktops. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, or crash the entire desktop. Yes. You're just showing off at that quit bro. Uh, Jordan does something on Thursdays. It is uh, whew, it's a carnival. There's no telling what's coming yeah. up on that. I know Jill, you like to join in on that. And you also show up on uh, yes. Fridays. But I'm yeah. Like, uh, what Yay! Do, I don't know. What did we do last week? Uh, portal. Didn't we do portal last week? I think. Yeah. 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 We that. <laughs> yeah. Go, go back and watch that exercise of frustration. If you want to see two people, two grown adults that think they're intelligent, no. <laughs> it's painful to watch. And we covered some distance on Friday, which was a one point release. And uh, I think this week we're going to play some Ultimate Chicken Horse this Friday. Yay! Okay. So that got a big update, and that sounds horrifying. All right, um, let's just do this slice of pie.
Indeed. <laughs> <Cool>. So Jill, <laughs> uh, yeah. you uh, want to tell yeah. us about this one? <laughs> yes, definitely. This is Learn Assembly with the ARM-based Raspberry Pi. Awesome. I love assembly. Assembly, if, if no one knows, is a low-level programming language whose statements correspond to machine code architecture. And it is great for system-on-chips and embedded programming, and it is also used in our computer's BIOS. And so, um, oh gosh, this is, it's, it's really awesome. There's a really nice uh, 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 book, a link to a, a book on, on uh, running the programs on the Raspberry Pi and how to install them. It's very in-depth. It's, it's basically a textbook. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's very well done. Um, I read through about the first 10 pages. Uh, this is awesome. And this is actually one of the first... Uh, languages that I learned on a, on my Commodore 64, my Atari ST, my Apple II, and x86 PCs, and uh, did lots of hacking with this <laughs> programming language <laughs> back in the day. Assembly is an on <laughs> <laughs> ASM, you mean NASM. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> it's a perfect little thing to tinker around with. Now, let this just be 100% yeah. awesome. I'm a huge fan of Assembly. Uh, just as like a thought experiment and playing with it, not to ever do yeah. anything functional. I'm incapable of making yeah. anything functional. Uh, maybe not mm -hmm. the most practical thing, but I think it's just weird now that you think, well, let's use something small and simple, like a one gigahertz <laughs> board with, you know, a gig of RAM and, you know, infinite storage network stack. You guys are just like, whoa, times have changed, man. Yeah. Definitely. Well, it's yeah. still used in, you know, the aerospace industry. industry well, if you're going to be doing something, so. yeah, like wicked small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the only thing I ever did in assembly, well, I learned assembly at university, and the um, the project for the end of that particular course was to um, code a very simple BIOS for one cool. of the uh, prototype motherboards that we had. Yay. And I got a uh, 15 out of possible 20 on that particular project because a bunch of the stuff, it was there. It just didn't work. No. <laughs> you see, Pedro, as we've learned uh, reviewing games, you, you had all the right parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I just put them, <laughs> put them in the wrong. Room. They're wrong. I forgot how that way was. Yeah, it's catastrophically bad. That's brilliant. Go check it out. All this in our show notes, mm -hmm. linuxgamecast.com. Uh, Pedro wants to hold this over his head. In the rain. No, no, I want this to be uh, on my furniture so it actually plays music because someone uh, got an old uh, boombox and they removed all the bits that were broken, put a touch screen, put a Raspberry Pi and a couple of other <laughs> things. Uh, they wired some stuff to make the original speakers actually. Hey, man, this is out. a Raspberry Pi project. You got to mention there's something 3D printed yes. in it. It's yes. mandatory. Of course. <laughs> Uh, they actually they built the entire Raspberry Pi with its case into the uh, the boombox. So uh, I guess all of those broken electronics were taking up a lot of space. Uh, so yeah, the whole thing uh, works. Uh, the buttons at the top are just there for show because they didn't actually make those work. That was disappointing. That would have been nice to get it to work, but, but it has a screen. You could, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> There's a guide and instructions to put all this, plus an accompanying video. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know. If I'm tearing apart a boombox, I'm making a transformer. Yeah, no, <laughs> this one I really like because it is still a boombox. It still plays the... Um, the musics, whatever you feed it to, it runs off of the Raspberry Pi so you can feed it anything. Uh, and it still looks the part with a touch screen in the middle but it still looks the part and i want one i really do yeah yeah it's really awesome it runs the deezer software yeah. which is really cool I, i've actually never used it but i've just seen screenshots of it it looks really awesome for for this purpose <laughs> i think that's pretty cool i can dig it um let's get out of here but before we do uh some people have some thoughts hints allegations maybe some questions for us words of advice yes. sage wisdom mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're looking for sage wisdom you don't want to go to the next gamecast.com at the contact button uh and uh i hear they got a the, new uh, theme form. 
<laughs> yes, uh, there's like a whole new WordPress theme going on. Uh, make sure not to pick <laughs> LWDW from the little choosy box because you will get no such wisdom from that place. What you will get is your comment featured right here, right now. You know, I'm just going to say, really listen, depressing. first of all, I'm not a betting man, but you probably get, you stand a better chance of doing it that way than with like relationship advice or LGC. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's just, like, the slightest monogram of, <laughs> of a chat. Too. It's a great but, way uh, to get a hold to uh, us, but I do think we need to point out. Um, you can leave YouTube comments; those work. Yep. But if you leave a Patreon comment, chances are you get priority over everything. The else. only way your yeah. Patreon comments not getting on there is if it has big bold. You might want to throw a blink tag on it too, just to be mm -hmm. safe. It's like don't put another show, <laughs> which we respect. Um, yes. <laughs> It's kind of dicey with YouTube. We're not like, we're too good to read YouTube. I just want to point that out, that we all have, uh, what do you call it, admin access to YouTube. And mm -hmm. once one person checks notifications, like Pedro just goes, does a vanity check, forgets about it. So I don't even know they're <laughs> there to put them in the show. Yeah, so, no, the blinky stuff just uh, disappears. So, yeah. <laughs> please keep that in mind. Or you can leave a comment at linuxgamecast.com, but then we'll have your information. And then I, <laughs> I don't know. Jill will do something nefarious. We'll sell it. <laughs> Yes, Jill of all people will be the one to do something to ferry. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay, first up, we have Luciano Dato, and he mm. asks, Hey guys, I'm the author, or he says, I'm the author of Noise Repellent. Thanks for mentioning my project. Thank Yay. you for creating it. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to throw that in there. Um, yeah. I thought it was neat. I was like, oh, wait, what? Huh? And it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> this, that was uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Go back and listen to last week's episode. It's a video I'm eventually going to be setting up is it's, I've had a couple of people ask. And to me, this is not hard, but I've been messing around with this for too long. It's a sickness at this point. Is <laughs> It's a plugin for live recording that you can set up with Jack and Ardor to do uh, audio filtering. Yeah. Brainy's have background noise and stuff like that. We have hardware that does that, but this is just like the little extra sauce, and it actually makes a very effective noise gate, even if you don't have hardware gates. So, uh, yeah, man. Uh, hey, Dato, Mr. Dato. How did you say? Is it Dato or Dato? <laughs> uh, in Portuguese, it would be Dato. It's Dato. <laughs> I don't know, man. You got an awesome piece of work. Keep up the great work. It is open source, and go check that out. Awesome. Uh, Thank you, Dato. <laughs> Last but not least, uh, I'm not trying that name. The Steven? <laughs> Aww. To st I don't That's know. The Steven. To to Steven. Yeah, to, yeah, to Steven. <laughs> to Stefan? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, it, it's not polite to make fun of people is all I would say. Uh, <laughs> Bats, man. What tools will tell me why my battery drains so fast on Linux? Question mark. BTW. I run Arch. Smiley mm. face. Mm -hmm. Power top. Just yeah, power top. <laughs> it, power top. It will give you the information on which process is pulling the battery for how long, uh, which device is using how much power per second, how many milliwatts it's draining from the battery. At any point, it will, uh, it even has like a little preset of optimizations that you can do to your hardware to minimize that uh, stray energy consumption. So, yeah, no, just use power top. It does. Mm -hmm. I, I've, yeah, <laughs> I, I had to carry laptops around from work, never again. Um, so, I'm not familiar with this. Does that tell you? What application is taking it down? Everything. Everything. It gives you applications, gives yeah. you devices, gives you random worker threads that may be using more power because of some reason. Does it generate uh, a human readable report? Yes. Okay. You just pass the dash dash mm -hmm. HTML uh, flag to it and it will generate an HTML file with everything. Pretty cool. How accurate is it? Uh, actually, pretty, pretty accurate. Uh, mm -hmm. The... Uh, the one test I saw of someone actually taking readouts from the battery connectors to uh, compare them to uh, PowerTop was a couple of years ago, and it was pretty accurate back then, so I'm guessing it's only gotten better. Hmm. <laughs> How much does this miraculous piece of software cost? Uh, nothing. <laughs> it's included in every single distro's repositories and their cats. <laughs> Neat. Yes. 
Yeah. Uh, Jill, do you get any <laughs> tips and tricks for that? I know nothing about laptops other than yeah, something's went yeah. horribly wrong in my life if ever having. I mean, um, you can use CPU Z to monitor your on monitor your battery. It is a little better than the 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 typical uh, no maplet and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But it's it won't show you all the detail, <laughs> you know, of of uh, what's uh, what apps are are using it and whatnot. So using your battery. What about mm -hmm. like integrated graphics? Does it monitor that? It gives you the driver. If the driver is pulling more power than it should, it shows up as um, like yeah. I i915 or i965 or the Radeon. Uh, because when I had the uh, the netbook with the AMD APU, mm -hmm. I also that's one of the things that drained the most power was the R600 drivers. Like oh. That's what's yeah. draining all the battery. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> well, hopefully this uh, Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday was 137 wasn't terribly draining for you. And uh, you'll come back <laughs> and join us next week when uh, we'll get to do this all over again. It starts at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Moon Time. But we've got a schedule on that web zone thing we keep talking about. And uh, yeah, go check mm -hmm. it out. I think we're going to... Maybe bring some music in, roll some credits. Ah, oh, yeah. Yay. Let's see if this works. Four beeps. <laughs> Maybe. Nope. Oh. Nope. <laughs> Buy me nope. some more smell time. That. Is that fire? I uh -oh. smell. Aw. Thank you, chat mm. realm. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, and an LGC original series. <laughs> it needs that in at the end of A. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Executive producers and producers! All the lovely, lovely people making yes. this show hat free. Hat free? Or ad hat free? Hat free. No hats. Hat free, yes. Yes. Live, loud, no independent, hats. also hat free. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! LWW 137. It's not leet, it's let. <laughs> it's lint. Bye, chat realm. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>